Welcome to Accelerate Your Wealth with Urban Cash Coach, personal and business finance for everyday people. On this webinar today, we're going to discuss a client named Tangie. Tangie is a young mother who was recently widowed and she's purchasing her first home. She is a first time home buyer in her family and she understands the importance of being able to build wealth and leave a legacy for her family. Let's learn a little bit more about Tangie and how she's working with her. Tangie is 33 years old, and the home that she's purchasing is $165,000. Her mortgage is a 30-year mortgage at 4%. Tangie wants to keep this home in the family for her three children to have a hand up later in life. Tansy is going to protect her home with life insurance. She's going to use living benefits just in case she becomes chronically or critically ill or passes away before the mortgage is paid off. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of living benefits, but I'm going to tell you a little more about them and why we want to include those in the insurance policy for Tangi. So living benefits allow a person to use a portion of their life insurance while they're still living to take care of financial needs uh, or pay for the policy. So when we think about Tangi, she's a single woman and she's got three children she's responsible for. So all of the things that could potentially put her asset at risk, her home. Now, we have to determine what's the right kind of life insurance for Tangi. Well, Tangi's got a limited budget because she's a widow. And she has three young children. She works at a local credit card collection firm. And she makes $60,000 a year plus a quarterly bonus. She gets $700 a month in Social Security benefits from her deceased spouse, and she owes $90,000 in student loan debt, and she also has a car note and several credit cards that she's used to pay. Now, health is wealth, and that really, really shows when we talk about life insurance for Tangi. When we talk about life insurance, the most competitive rates are going to be for the youngest and healthiest of all of the applicants. So here's what we know about Tangi. Tangi has a great BMI, her body mass index. When she goes to visit the doctor, the doctor is very pleased with how much she weighs in relationship to her height. <clears throat> so while she's met with her cash coach, she is trying to determine how she can get this wealth moved over into a position of ownership versus a liability. So we all know that when we get a mortgage, a mortgage is technically a liability, right? That means that we owe someone for that particular home. If we are not able to pay it, they can take the home back from us. We want to transition from a liability to an asset. Now, let's check in about what we know about Tangie. Tansy will have her mortgage paid off in 20 years. She will have protected her assets for her family in case she became ill or died unexpectedly. She owns the house outright. Her home is now an asset with equity. Now she's 53 years old and she's debt free and her children are young adults now starting their own lives. Look at Tansy. 
Now what? Now let's do another insurance policy review for Tangi because we purchased Tangi a 30-year term policy. Now, a 30-year term policy means that that policy is only going to have a locked-in premium of her $39 and change for 30 years. At the end of that 30-year period, the cost of the insurance can increase and will likely increase dramatically. And then so Tangi is now approaching retirement. Uh, and unfortunately, she's gotten diagnosed with a rare cancer. So she's able to go to work while she has her treatment, so she doesn't need to tap into that disability waiver. Um, but she's not able to get any more life insurance. So now she's in a little bit of a pinch because if she needs to try to get a new policy, she no longer qualifies. And this happens very often to a permanent policy that permanent policy is also going to accumulate some cash value in it. So Tandy's new permanent policy is guaranteed to pay out $250,000 at minimum at her death, and she still has the same living benefits. Look at Tandy. Tandy got her a boo now. At age 65, we looked at the policy, and there's going to be some cash built up in it, and she's told her so Tangie set out to leave a legacy of wealth and assets to her family, no matter what. She understood that it was important to protect her most valuable asset from all the risks while her children were young. She had a plan with a paycheck attached to it if she had any major medical challenge or an unexpected death that would drastically affect her income or ability to pay off her home. When she gets that final call to glory, a 2017 study by Prosperity Now concluded the median wealth of African Americans would be zero by the year 2053 if nothing changed. In order to promote generational wealth, Black families must accelerate the ownership of assets that appreciate in value, while well as pass them on to the next generation. That is the largest issue that we have. We have definitely turned the corner and begun as minorities to learn how to acquire assets.